Okay, question number seven from June 2013. Um, S1 legacy paper, the, the Edexcel papers, not the IAL papers, um, the, the replacement paper, the R paper. So if the score S, when a spinner is spun, has the following probability distribution. Now this is part F. We've done the we've done the rest of the questions in in the previous video. Okay, the score S when a spin is spun has the following probability distribution. So this is this represents the score. You're going to get zero, one, two, three, one, two, four, or five. Okay, those are the scores. Those are the numbers that appear on the spinner. Zero, one, two, four, and five. And these are the probabilities of those numbers appearing. So obviously they're not. It's not um, an equally likely. Oh, it's not a fair spinner, you could say. There's some some are more like some numbers are more likely to show than others. <clears throat> so here's the probability distributions for each of those scores. It says the spinner is spun twice, and the score from the first spin is S1, and the score from the second spin is S2. So the random variables S1 and S2 are independent, and the random variable X is S1 times S2. So the random var variable X is basically you see what you got on this first spin. You see what you got in the second spin, and you, you, you find the product of them. You multiply them together, and that gives you the random variable x. Okay, so part f says, show that the probability that s1 equals 1 intersection with x is less than 5 is equal to 0 0.16. So what they're saying is, if the first score is, if the first spinner shows a 1, okay, and... The total score, the total score, the total uh, value of x, which is the, the the product of s1 and s2, is going to be less than five. You're going to show that that probability is 0 0.16. So let's see what happens here. So we know that the first spinner definitely will say one. So all the possibilities going to have one for s1. We're going to think of all the ways of getting uh, less than five. So for example, if the second spinner shows a zero, that will give less than five. If the second spinner shows a one. That will also be less than 5. This is 1 times 0 is 0, 1 times 1 is 1. If the second spinner shows a 2, that's also less than 5. And if it shows a 4, that's also less than 5. But it shows a 5, no, that's not included. Why? Because 1 times 5 is 5, which is not less than 5. So you've got the probability of getting a 1 for the first score, which is going to be 0 0.2, multiplied by the probability of getting a 0 or a 1 or a 2 or a 4. A 0 or a 1 or a 2 or a 4. So it's everything except for getting a 5. So it's going to be 0 0.8. Because if you add them together, you get 0 0.8. We can do 1 minus 0 0.2, you get 0 0.8. So 0 0.2 times 0 0.8, okay, which gives you 0 0.16. All right? Now, because they already told us the answer, it might be a, an idea for us to... Um, show this in a, in a slightly better way. So we can say the probability that S equals 1 is equal to 0 0.2. And the probability that S equals 1, 2, 3, or 4, 1, 2, uh, sorry, 0, 1, 2, or 4, zero, 0, or 1, let me just put that, 0 or 1 or 2 or 4 is equal to 0 0.8 and then you can write that down it's probably better to show that so that you know the steps are shown very clearly that you haven't just guessed from the answer okay so that's part f now part g says find the probability that x is less than 5 so x remember is a product of the two um, numbers so you've got to think of all the ways of getting a product of less than 5 Okay, so let's take a look at these, all the different possibilities we can have. Well, we could have a zero on the first spinner and a zero on the second spinner. Or you can have a zero, let's look at all the zero on the first spinner. You can have a zero on the second spinner or a one on the second spinner or a two or a four or a five. Okay, those are all the possibilities, right? You've got zero, one, two, four or five. Okay, so that will all, all of those options will give you a probability of uh, x being less than 5, because x, remember, is s1 times s2. So if this is s1 and these are s2, all of those will give us uh, that probability. So that would be um, 
the probability of getting a zero is 0 0.2. So you'll have 0 0.2 times and then 1, which is 0 0.2. Okay? Because all of those probabilities will add up to 1. And then if you get a 1, and you get a 0, and a 1, and a 2, and a 4, but not a 5. Okay, because that will give you equal to 5. So that's going to be 0. Point, probably getting a 1 is 0. 0.2 again. Okay, times 0. 0.8, which is going to be 0. 0.16. Okay, that's because the probability of getting a 5 is 0. 0.2, so it's 1 minus that. Okay, and if you get a 2 on the first spinner, and you get a, a 0, you can get a 1, and you can get a 2. You can't get a 4, why? Because that will be product of, that will be 2 times 4, which is 8. You want a product that is less than 5. So you're going to have, the probability of getting a 2 is 0 0.1. So you get 0 0.1 times, and then you look at the combined probabilities of getting a one, 0, 1 or 2. two 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.5. 0 0.5. So 0 0.1 times 0 0.5 which is going to be 0 0.05. Okay? Then, if the first spinner is a 3, you can get a 0, and you can get a 1, but you can't get a 2, because getting a 2 will cause you to get a probability which is bigger. Uh, you'll get a, a number which is 6. 3 times 2 is 6. So you're going to have the probability of getting a 3 is 0. Sorry, there's no 3 there. The next number is a 4 that you could get. Okay, so the probability of getting a 4 is 0 0.3. Okay, so yeah, let's just make sure, yes, 0, 1, or 2, yeah, only these will fit. So 0 0.3 times, okay, probability of getting a 4 is 0 0.3, and then you've got to add these two, which is 0 0.4, times 0 0.4. That gives you 0 0.12. And then, if you get a 5 on the first row, you can get a 0 on the second row, and all the other probabilities will give you something more than 5. So that's going to be a 0 0.2 times 0 0.2. The probability of getting a 5 is 0 0.2, and 0 getting 0 0.2. That gives you 0 0.04. So if you combine all these probabilities together, you will get the probability of getting the total score less than 5. So that's going to be... Um, 0 0.2, let's just add this together. So 0 0.2 plus 0 0.16 plus 0 0.05 plus 0 0.12 plus 0 0.04. And that gives you an answer as 0 0.57. 0 0.57. Okay. Um, yeah, that's at first glance the easiest way to do that question. It might be an easy way if you think of the opposite. You could think of all the ways of getting bigger than 5. And just instead of going through all of this, we could have done that. Actually, that might have been easy. Let's see if that works. So... Let's think of all the ways of getting bigger than 5. So you say, okay, <clears throat> 0 times 5, no, 1 times 5, 5 or more. So you can say getting a 1 on the first and a 5 on the second. So you can say 0 0.2 times 0 0.2. Okay. And getting a 2 on the first, that's getting a, a 1 and a 5. Getting a 0, they're getting a 2. And a 0 is okay, 2 and a 1 is okay, 2 and a 2 is okay, 2 and a 4 is not okay. So 0 0.1 times and 2 and a 4 or 2 and a 5, that's going to give you um, 0 0.5. Getting a 2 and either a 4 or a 5 afterwards. Okay, and getting a 4, which would be 0 0.3 times what would be not okay would be getting a 4 and, a, and these all combined, which is 0 0.4 times... 0 0.4, 0 0.6. Okay, that's a 2 and a 4 and a 2 and a 5. And a 4 and a 2, so 0. 
Zero point, yeah, so, so a four and a two and a four and a four and a four and a five. Okay, and then that's getting that's where you should get a a one, a two, and a four, and a five, and a zero. That, that all of the rest of them will be unacceptable. So zero point two times all of these, which is zero point eight. So you'll have zero point zero four plus zero point zero five plus zero point one eight plus zero point one six. Let's see if that gives us the same thing when you do one minus those. You've got zero point zero point zero what's that first one? Oops. Okay, zero point zero four I think it was. Yep. So zero point zero four. Plus zero point zero five plus zero point one eight plus zero point one six. You do one minus that, and you get the same answer. Okay, so you can see here that it didn't really. Um, which one? Which one was quicker? It, it seems that this this way that we did was quicker. So we had well, they're not that much difference between them to be honest. You have to multiply four there, you have to multiply five there. So it's a bit quicker, but it doesn't make too much of a difference either way. But you get the same answer, zero point five seven, when you've done that. Okay. So there we have the answer to this question. Okay.